Ahoy hoy. And wait, something's different. I can't. Hmm. I'm not really sure what it is. I guess it's not important. Anyway, welcome to the video. I am going to react today to memes from the dank memes from site 19 subreddit. Let's just get started. The Ethics Committee. We have ruled that your practices for the last year have been severely unethical and a reformation of procedures will be necessary. The O5 Council. Behold, the I don't care nator. I mean, yes and no. The Ethics Committee can enforce, can, it's complicated, it depends on the canon you're, you're uh, dealing with, but in mainline canon, the Ethics Committee probably has the authority to direct the O5 Council to do things. Uh, and if they don't, then they will probably be found in violation by the remainder of the O5 Council. That's the other half of it. It's all politics, right? So the O5 Council is really the only thing that can sanction the O5 Council, but they all accede to the idea that the Ethics Committee knows what they're doing and should be listened to. So even if they disagree with an Ethics Committee uh, ruling, this is the thing. And this, this comes up with a lot of the writers, too. Like, they don't understand how it's possible for someone to disagree with the Ethics Committee ruling and somehow still vote to enforce it. That's the idea of creating an Ethics Committee. It's not created just for the fun of it. It was created because you know you can't trust yourself to make those decisions. So when they make a decision you, you disagree with, you either A... <laughs> Uh, help them enforce it anyway, or B, give up on the whole idea of having an ethics committee in the first place. There is no middle ground. Anyway, moving on. Dogs according to normal people. Dogs according to weebs. I, I don't... I... wait. I don't get that one. Dogs according to SCP fans. Dogs according to Datto. Fire spider by Datto. Get fine dog free. Yeah, all right. Wait, is that? Oh. I looked at the anime image again. I think it's anime, but yeah. That's, that's supposed to be a dog, I think. Okay. That's weird. SCP writers that spend months crafting a perfect article that references dozens of GOIs and known concepts in the lore while still providing a horrifying and beautiful story. SCP writers that talk about a cat missing its ass. I mean, let's be real here. If you spend months crafting an SCP article, I feel like maybe you have taken too much time to work on it. Because the minimum quality level in the SCP wiki is not particularly high. <laughs> so it was taking months to produce something that could have been fairly mediocre and still successful feels like a waste of time. I'm just saying. Um, uh, and if it is, I mean, then there is some, ama like I said, there's some amazing, I've said this before, not to this time around, but I've said before, there's some amazing stuff on the SCP wiki. Quality level to the to beyond what you would expect uh, of professional writers, but the average quality level, not super high. You're not hitting. There's not a high bar to hit. It's a. It's it's like um, practice, I guess, for writing. Like you're gonna be successful as long as you meet a minimum level of quality, and that's it. Don't, don't do that. Just find a fun concept, write it out, and enjoy yourself. Don't agonize, and then don't agonize afterwards and be like, oh, it didn't, it didn't do so well. I spent all this time on it. Who fucking cares? Who are you? I'm SCP-001. Do you have the slightest idea how little that narrows it down? <laughs> I think this is, uh, I think I even know the original quote. It's something like, you killed my father. Or so, like, because the this is uh, blight from Batman Beyond. That's right, I'm old. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he didn't kill his father. He sent the Jokers to kill his father. Doesn't matter. Not important for this video. Um, <laughs> but the, yeah, there's a lot of OO ones on the SCP wiki. A lot at this point. Like, you know, what are you reading? SCP zero zero one. Which one? Oh, the one about uh, godlike power. Which one? Oh, the one where the SCP Foundation realizes that they've royally screwed up. <sighs> I said which one? SCP-005 lead researcher being told about SCP-005's anomalous effects. Damn, bro, that's crazy, but I don't remember asking. 
I love I love this because of the wordplay involved, and that is all. If you don't get it, I'm sorry for you. It needed to be included. The Foundation. If you contain this anomaly, we might learn a lot from it instead of term the GOC. If it isn't normal, no need to be formal. I, I don't know. The SV Foundation doesn't do a very good job of, like, they learn from things. Yeah, but then they use that knowledge for nothing. So in the end, what's the difference between them and the, uh, I mean, it's, the problem is we get this idea, and it comes out of a lot of fiction, like television and etc., that as long as somebody is still alive at the end of the story, everything's fine. Reset. It's good. But is it really? Like, we, you're subjecting people to stuff that's going to give them trauma for forever, even if they do get out, and inherently telling them that they're never going to get out, and the, the reader as well, that they're never going to get out. So what's the difference between killing something and putting it in a box forever where it will never escape, except... It's still alive and essentially being tortured by the fact that it's uh, being left alone with no interactions with other people. It's just, it is maybe tiny bit better and that's it. And plus, even if, and that's if they do, in some incarnations of the SB Foundation, they don't even bother with doing research. They're just stuck on the, we put it in a box and that's it. Let's move on. When they do do research, that do do. When they do, do research, they uh, that information is just uh, in the ether. It, it it's filed away in some secret d document that no one ever will read. So what benefit have you given to? It's just yeah. You are without a doubt the worst doctor I've ever heard of, but you have heard of me. I mean, yeah. This is this is hilarious to me. I think this is supposed to be the SCP-049-J no, in a nutshell. And uh, I think it's pretty accurate. Yeah, I'll give it. I'll give you that. That's pretty accurate. The offsite community. Trying not to mention Series 1 SCPs or Dr. Bright. It's impossible. I mean, yeah. The problem isn't necessarily... Okay, so it's a, it's, it, the problem is this. SCP-001 and Dr. Bright are popular with a certain segment of the fan base that tend to be particularly vocal about it. And that's the only problem. So we get so used to people who just won't shut the heck up about, you know, SCP-049. I'll give you an example of the one we were just looking at. They just won't. And, like, everything they say is 049 based. They walk in as Plague Doctor 69 or 420, whatever, and and be like, hey, what do you think would happen if you put 049 up against X other Series 1 SCP? And you're like, well, I don't know. This may be this, maybe this, maybe, and this maybe. And they're like, okay, cool. So what do you think would happen if you put 049? And they just, every question, every comment they come up with is 049. So when someone comes in new, and starts talking about their favorite, oh, their favorite Series 1 SCP, or starts talking about their obsession with Bright or Clef or uh, any of the other uh, doctors. It it calls back to that. And even if the person is not socially inept to that level, it still feels that way because people are so used to it being that way. Is it fair? Probably not, but it is what it is. So it's just a matter of, like, keep it to yourself. <laughs> If you're talking to people who aren't uh, also new to the SCP Wiki, and honest to God, if the people are new to the, even if they are new to the SCP Wiki, maybe still don't, because you're building them up to do the same thing that you're you're doing, which is uh, getting your reputation as somebody who, getting your reputation with the extant writers uh, in a way that is not favorable to you. Is it fair, by the way? No, I don't think so. But it's a common problem, especially among young people who just hyperfixate, and it is what it is. I think hyperfixation in young people is probably one of the. It's like they and of course they don't realize that's what they're doing. I don't think because there's also a certain level of social awkwardness to it. But when you hyperfixate on a particular individual specific topic not a general topic or talking about a particular thing or even just having a discussion about a thing but when you make <laughs> scp 049 is not a personality carl that's all i'm saying 
anyway, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please scroll down and hit the subscribe button and then hit the notification bell so you're notified when I upload new videos. And if you'd really like to support the channel, you have two options. You can scroll down and click through to buy a piece of merchandise with my uh, logo and or my uh, uh, you're wrong about this. You know, you're wrong about this poster. There's a you're wrong about this shirt. You're wrong about this mug. You're wrong about this hoodie. Get what you'd like. I've been thinking about putting out a you're wrong about this face mask, but um. I can't get around. I can't figure out how to make the design myself. My other stuff was made by someone else and I'm trying, I'm trying so hard. It's not in my bailiwick. It's not in my wheelhouse. It's just not, it's not in my wheelhouse. It's just not, I'm not good at, I'm not good at arting anyway. And then if you, uh, if you don't want to buy something, you can always just head on over to patreon.com forward slash D Sumerian and pledge at any level like Everybody here on the screen already has, including Dr. J Redacted and Sinjariki, who have both pledged at $100, and Morgan, who has pledged at $40. It's nice to know that I'm not alone out here, and I will see you all again on Thursday.